before we kind of dig into branding and and marketing and the psychology behind those areas like how do you approach deconstructing consumer behavior and the intersection of of psychology marketing branding yeah, so I think the best place to look is is really at this sort of central definition for neuromarketing, which is really, I think, the most central. I mean, it's it's a bit of semantics. I think different people from different camps would define these things slightly differently. But I think neuromarketing really is sort of at the, the core uh, of this deep intersection between marketing, neuroscience, psychology, behavioral economics, et cetera. And neuromarketing really is two things. One, it's utilizing the cumulative wisdom of psychology and neuroscience, really what we've learned, we've gleaned about the human brain over the past 150 years of empirical science and applying that to marketing and branding. And to this end, uh, the field is really interested in, in relatively general questions. So if for example, a, a, a young brand is trying to define their brand personality in a way that attracts and, and builds a, a nice bond with their target market within that industry, that is a question that, that certainly involves a good bit of market research and good number crunching to see the size of the market and the competitive landscape, et cetera. But it's also a deeply psychological question as well in terms of asking what's really going to resonate at the level of brand to consumer personality relationship. Uh, so very general questions are sort of addressed with this, this sort of mainstream of neuromarketing. The other sort of stream that runs simultaneous to that is neuromarketing really as a hypothesis testing technique. So instead of going to a classic focus group, uh, going to a group of, of 40 or 50 indicative consumers and asking them, do you like this advertisement better? Do you like this advertisement better? Uh, you can avail yourself of neuroimaging technology. So using uh, EEG, fMRI, galvanic skin response, and really trying to sort of quote unquote, look under the surface and understand not just a overt behavioral response in the case of a, a sort of consumer focus group, but also what the underlying neuroscientific mechanisms of that consumer experience are. And there's some good indication that when we're taking a look at these more implicit processes and we're more mechanistically driven as opposed to behaviorally outcome driven, uh, that this can actually be more revealing and can actually offer a, a data set that is complementary to what we might find in these overt psychological responses. 